Okay, we're here today with uh, Mark McGough from the Age Man, the captain of the Age Man of Football Club. So, Mark, why do they call you Stinky McGough? Ah, uh, Stinky McGough. Well, um, glad you asked that question, especially first up. Um, so long ago, I thought it was born, and I thought it died at the Collingwood Football Club. Uh, I had a little problem with flatulence back there when I was a seventeen-year-old when I first got drafted. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> So outside of footy, what, what do you do as a vocation? Yeah, um, yeah go from Stinky and off to I'm um, actually a, a high school teacher. Yep. Whereabouts um, is that? I'm uh, teaching at uh, starting third term at uh, Murdoch College. Oh, sounds good. Um, so you remember as an ex Collingwood and St Kilda player in the AFL. Uh, where did you play your junior football? Uh, junior football, I grew up uh, three hours north of Melbourne, uh, in, just out of Yarrawonga, and I played uh, across the river in uh, Mawala, um, the Mawala Lions. Uh, and where did you go after you left the Saints? Saints uh, went overseas for a year, um, did a bit of study in Arizona on exchange, then did a bit of travel through South America, and uh, came back the following year and played a couple of years at Montmorency in the Northern Football League of, uh, of Melbourne. Oh, brilliant. And uh, would, I be, would I be right in assuming that the highlight of uh, your time in the AFL was winning the 2002 Anzac Day medal? Uh, yeah, that, and uh, I think um, yeah, my first game the week before was, uh, was a highlight as well. So that was only your second game, and... Uh, you're only 17, I believe. 17, yeah, and still at school. So it was, oh, wow. Uh, and walked yeah. over the end of that medal. It's a pretty mean feat. Probably not achieved by too many players. And um, after all that, what has brought you to WA and obviously to the Sharks? Uh, a bit of a bit of a change from the uh, cold, dreary weather of Melbourne and yep. uh, just wanting to um, yeah, sort of play at a high standard of football again um, yep. while I still can. And uh, the coach, former coach, uh, Shane Mawoden, the Sharks had a connection with him playing at Collingwood, so um, I was able to reply to him last year. That's brilliant. So you're captaining uh, the Sharks in your second season. This must be a bit of an honour. Uh, yeah, it's a great honour. It's uh, very proud and uh, they've got a um, you know, very distinguished history, the uh, East Fremantle Football Club, and uh, yeah, being captain of the, of the Sharks is a huge honour. That's brilliant. And um, how have you found the responsibility of captaining the side? Uh, yeah, it was tough at the start because I was injured and then uh, my form was down a little bit and uh, the team wasn't going that well. But uh, you know, it obviously helps when we when we're winning and well, we lost lost on the weekend. Um, it uh, it does. It, there's a little bit more pressure as captain to perform and yeah, of uh, and, and how you uh, behave around the, the club. Yeah, and um, so who assists you in the leadership duties? Who's your main you know, support guys? Uh, we have a leadership group. Um, so there's seven of us: uh, Richard Hadley, Jamie McNamara, Robert Young, Kim Monteith, Andrew Stephen, and Leith Teakle. So uh, they're my main support guys. And they've been doing a good job this year. Ah, uh, yeah, we have. I think um, a few of the guys have been injured, but um, yeah, I think think overall we've been uh, steering the club in the in the right direction off the field at least. Yeah, it's brilliant. And um, what's been the biggest challenge uh, with this role this year? Uh, just just getting used to uh, the responsibility of um, being the captain and uh, making sure that uh, you do everything right and um, yeah, just just making sure you lead by example at, at all times. Okay, so how do you explain what appears to be um, a considerable variation in form over the season? I mean, you started with one lo- a one win, four losses, uh, then winning five in a row. Uh, now you've lost three out of the last four games. Uh, yeah, I can't explain it. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, we've got to look at and uh, try and come up with a with an answer. But uh, at the moment, we we're uh, scratching our heads too. Oh, okay. So uh, maybe a bit of time in the video room and checking out the last few games. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we'll sort of sit down and have a few meetings, have a bit of a discussion, and see what we come up with. Um, in, you've got a fair bit of inaccuracy in front of goals. Uh, this has been an issue. During the season, uh, is this a concern of the clubs moving forward? Oh, definitely a concern uh, when you're losing losing games that uh, that you should win um, through inaccuracy and, uh, and um, I suppose you know when you kick kicking goals, it's it's good football and um, yeah, it's definitely an area of concern for us. Yeah, so the the most recent loss on Saturday was against uh, Peel Thunder. Um, it saw the Sharks with almost a hundred more possessions, but you went down by twenty six. Um, what was your take on the side's inability? to translate possessions into results on the scoreboard. Yeah, we just didn't, didn't move the ball uh, efficiently enough through the through the midfield. Uh, we overused handball and then um, going forward we went probably too wide which uh, um, resulted in us kicking too many points. Well how did uh, Stephen Laxis re- uh, react to this loss? Uh, he was a very, very angry man and uh, let us all know um, that uh, what we dished up on Saturday wasn't acceptable for uh, 
and he's free now. Uh, well, your, your own form was good with 35 possessions. Uh, would you consider this one of your better games of the year? Oh, uh, yeah, slowly over the last month, I've started to get a little bit better, but I uh, sort of had a few buys, so yeah. um, it's sort of starting to string out a little bit um, and makes it difficult to get that um, continuity of, uh, of form, but uh, yeah, my body's feeling good, so hopefully the last six games we can continue on with that form. Yeah, and then hopefully moving into finals as well. Absolutely. As out of your teammates, who's been the surprise packet of the season? Uh, I think probably Rory O'Brien coming from Peel uh, has had a great influence on the club. Um, he works hard, uh, very professional in his pro approach and uh, was rewarded with uh, being our only state representative um, this year. That's brilliant. Well, um, who, do you, who do you think the Sharks need firing for you guys to start turning these losses into victories? Um, I think, uh, you know, it's a, it's, it is a team effort, but it'd be great to see we've um, had a few injuries. Um, Michael Warren uh, has been out, and it'd be great to have him back up and firing. And uh, Riley Dunn um, is hopefully only a couple of weeks away from coming back and giving us a much uh, needed boost up forward. Yeah, which would be great in the last half of the season, last quarter of the season. So, how was the mood among the playing groups after after the last two defeats um, against Subiaco and Peel? Uh, yeah, it's probably. Yeah, not too sure. Like we were pretty uh, bitterly disappointed, probably to lose the last two after uh, being in sort of commanding positions at, at uh, quarter time, and then and then um, you know pretty much kicking ourselves out of the game. Um, so um, you know we need to just get back on the uh, track and, and work hard and see if we can come up against uh, East Perth with a, with a better attitude for the for the whole game. Yeah, a bit of fire in the belly. Absolutely, right, Billy. So the Sharks have had a very large number of buyers throughout this part of the season. How has the training and workload schedule been planned for this period? Uh, it's sort of, we've been training Saturdays. Um, we had the state buy off, um, but we've been training Saturday mornings as well, um, sort of match practice type stuff, uh, just to try and keep that continuity of, uh, of training and, and workload going. That's right, because you want to keep the match uh, hardness on through all the buyers. Now, um, sides have been struggling to win off the bye this year. Has this been raised amongst the players? Uh, it, ha it hasn't uh, directly. Uh, we'll probably get discussed tonight, I think, and um, we'll probably look at the next two weeks, and we've got another bye after Swans uh, later in the year to see if we can uh, uh, adjust any of the, the training program. Yeah, um, so can we expect any players to return? Uh, not too sure. Um, there's been a few guys uh, playing well in the reserves um, that will probably get an opportunity. Um, so, yeah, it'll, it'll, uh, maybe Michael Warren, and uh, you might see the return of Riley Dunn, uh, but he might come back through the reserves. We'll just have to wait and see. Brilliant. Well, um, following East Perth at Shark Park, you travelled to Caratha to take on Swans, uh, and then you got a bye, but then you got West Perth and Geraldton. Um, are the players looking forward to the regional games, and what's your take on them? Uh, yeah, I think it's a great initiative um, to go up to your to re your regional areas and uh, promote the game in your region. And uh, I think the players are looking forward to it. Um, you know, it's, uh, go up and uh, if if anything else, see a different part of the state that uh, you haven't seen before. Yeah, I think it's great that we're getting out to all the regional areas as well. Um, has the season met the expectations of the group to date? Uh, well, obviously, the start of each year you aim to play finals, and uh, once you get in the finals, you reassess your goals and, and go from there. And we're sitting fourth at the moment. Now, even though we've lost two out of the last three, we, we're still in position that we can we can um, play finals and uh, and push up to that third position. Yeah. Well, with six games to go, uh, you are in fourth spot, as you said, and Subi Subi's only four points behind now. Uh, what are expectations of the playing group? Are finals de are definite in your eyes? Uh, I think if we don't play finals, we uh, haven't lived up to expectations. So um, we'd be uh, bitterly disappointed if we don't make finals. And what lies ahead for the club as far as fundraising uh, is concerned? Uh, on the 23rd of July, we have a reverse raffle at the football club. Uh, so that's $60 and um, it's a band, entertainment, food and wine. So... Um, Mate, if you're free, uh, you've got nothing on, you can uh, come on down to the East Fremantle Football Club on the 23rd after the East Perth game. Brilliant, sounds good. Well, thanks, thanks for coming on, Mark, and um, yeah, thanks for your time. And good luck to East Fremantle. <laughs>